I am such an awesome guy. I make so many videos. Hello there. Price of Reason here with a series review. The Power of the Doctor marks the end of the controversial Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall era of Doctor Who. Since the iconic British sci-fi show premiered in 1963, most regeneration episodes, which are a type of changing of the guard, have been bittersweet. On the one hand, viewers are usually sad to see one actor depart the Doctor role, but on the other hand, they're usually curious to see which actor would step into the role. On December 25th, 2017, actor Peter Capaldi made his final appearance as the 12th Doctor, and while most fans were sad to see him depart, it's pretty safe to say that his replacement, Jodie Whittaker, has never really been well received by longtime Doctor Who fans. I suspect the same fans also won't shed any tears over the departure of showrunner Chris Chibnall either. That's because the issues with actress Jodie Whittaker and showrunner Chris Chibnall's era were in fact so big that some would argue that they irreversibly damaged or even completely destroyed the beloved 59-year-old sci-fi franchise. A lot has been said about the failures of this era, but if I had to sum it up, I'd say that the show was damaged by the following four major issues. Number 1. Miscasting Jodie Whittaker isn't the worst actress in the world. If we were casting for a standard dramatic role for a career woman or wife or a mother on a regular BBC drama, I think she'd be perfectly adequate. The problem is that The Doctor is a role that has always been suitable for actors with a specific type of charisma, playful charm, and larger-than-life personality. Jodie Whittaker has never had those type of qualities as an actress, and throughout her entire run on Doctor Who, she also never grew into the role. Now this isn't a personal attack on Jodie Whittaker either. Not all actors are right for every role. For example, if I were making a movie about Winston Churchill, I probably wouldn't cast actor Joe Pesci in that role. Not because Joe Pesci isn't a good actor, it's just not the best use of his specific skills. That's why you have the casting process, and no matter how you look at it, Jodie Whittaker simply wasn't right for this role. Number 2. Poor Writing As miscast as Jodie Whittaker was as the Doctor, there's one problem that would absolutely guarantee she couldn't succeed as the Doctor, regardless of her acting, and that is, of course, the writing led by showrunner Chris Chibnall. Similarly to Whittaker, Chibnall is adequate for standard TV dramas, but when dealing with a sci-fi property with over six decades of mythology and lore, he was in way over his head. I have no doubt that with his departure, he has cemented his tenure as the most poorly written in the history of the entire franchise. A sci-fi show with very poor writing simply cannot survive, and he may go down in television history as the man who single-handedly caused the most damage to the Doctor Who franchise ever. Number 3. Agenda Over the past five years, the BBC have decided to implement certain agendas into all of their programming, and it's become so extreme that no show can escape them. While many shows have suffered for this, I can't think of a show that has been more hurt by it than Doctor Who. The BBC's obsession with identity politics and modern-day feminism was the catalyst in transitioning the Doctor from a man into a woman after 55 years. To make matters worse, between the BBC's agenda peddling and Chris Chibnall's poor writing skills, the show went from being escapist family entertainment to being overly preachy and boring, taking away any of the fun that has always been at its core. The peak of this ill-advised strategy was the infamous Timeless Children episode, where the entire franchise mythology was altered in order to make the first Doctor also a female rather than a male, and have her powers stolen from her as part of cultural appropriation. As a result of this episode, the origin of the first Doctor was completely, uh, updated in order to promote the BBC's agendas while disrespecting the late actor William Hartnell in the process. For many, this proved to be a pill too bitter to swallow, and many longtime fans, myself included, had considered this to be the final straw. That is actually the reason why The Power of the Doctor is the first episode that I've watched since The Timeless Children. Number 4. Attacking the Fans As we see with most studios, networks, and streaming services these days, after failing to deliver a good product, rather than to acknowledge their own mistakes, they prefer to attack their existing and potential customers for not liking their product. 
This ridiculous strategy started in 2016 with the release and failure of Ghostbusters 2016 and has become common industry practice ever since. The BBC and their media shills also employed this tactic, claiming that if you don't like the female doctor era, you're an ist and a phobe. The problem is, PR damage control is not equivalent to good writing quality, artistic merit, or viewership numbers, and in the years since Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall took over, most of the show's audience has simply disappeared. Now a question that has been asked in recent years is if a female doctor could have ever worked, and my answer to that is possibly, but not likely. Personally, I think that there was never a need to make the doctor a woman. He was a man for 54 years prior, and that was just a part of his character. If they wanted to build up a separate female character, it was very easy to introduce a female Time Lord into the franchise and give her a main role, or even a spin-off at some point. But that's not what the BBC wanted. If they did, there were even some options already available within canon, such as River Song, Jenny, Ramana, Susan, but this was always about pushing an agenda, and from what I've seen, any time that this is the only reasoning behind a creative decision, it is usually destined to fail. The only way that this could have possibly worked is if they would have found the best actress for the role, and also had the best writing on the show to date. That's a pretty tall order, but in order to have made such a radical change, that is what was needed in order to get the fans behind it. Otherwise, a change like this just looks like a trendy gimmick, and at the end of the day, I believe that this is what the Jody and Chibs era will be remembered as. After realizing that they pretty much destroyed one of the top three sci-fi franchises of all time, the BBC finally understood just how badly they f***ed things up and desperately tried to do something to save the once lucrative Doctor Who franchise. That is why they rehired showrunner Russell T. Davies to return for a second tenure on the show, an era now being called RTD2. Davies is known for successfully resurrecting the franchise in 2005, leading to one of the biggest comebacks of a series of all time. Shortly after Davies' return was announced, it was also announced that actor Nishuti Gatwa would be the new Doctor, replacing Jodie Whittaker in the role. As a disappointed Doctor Who fan, I wasn't overly excited about this casting announcement. I had never heard of Nishuti Gatwa prior, and after the disastrous tenure of Jodie and Chibs, I felt like this casting probably wasn't enough to win back any fans. That's why on the day when I heard the news, I actually posted a tweet saying that it probably would have been better if Jodie would have regenerated into David Tennant. I didn't really think it would make sense within canon, but as a fan, that was just my gut instinct, because you really need a palate cleanser after something like Jodie and Chibs, and to be honest, even with a David Tennant return, I don't know if they can fix all of the damage that they've done. I mean, unless they find a way to completely retcon the Timeless Child out of existence, there is a huge canonical problem within this show, and in any case, even seeing the past five years and what the franchise has become, sometimes you see something and you can never go back to seeing it the way it was. Just ask Star Wars. I suppose that Russell T. Davies also understood the trouble that the franchise was in, much as we all did. That's why he actually did find a way to bring back David Tennant, which is unprecedented within the franchise that a doctor would regenerate into a previous version of himself. Now I know that people will say that it's because of the 60th anniversary and it's a special treat, but we all know that that's not really the case. As far as the rest of the Power of the Doctor episode, with the exception of a few moments, for the most part, it was a very depressing ordeal. While it was nice seeing classic Who former doctors such as Sylvester McCoy, Peter Davison, and even Colin Baker, as well as former companions such as Ace, Tegan, and Ian, at the end of the day, this episode was just as poor as the entire Jodie and Chibs era. If anything, at those moments where I saw classic cast members, I really missed the days the show still had merit. I also couldn't help but feel bad for Paul McGann. As the TV movie doctor, outside of his Big Finish audio stories, this franchise has never done right by him. I would genuinely be interested in seeing him get a full series or maybe even a mini-series of on-screen episodes, and I would have gladly further delayed Nishuti's appearance in order for this to happen. Regardless, even some of the cast members that appeared during the Chibs era weren't bad. For example, when I saw Graham and Dan in the episode, I felt again that they could have been pretty decent characters with better writing and a better doctor actor, but they kind of just got the short end of the stick. Finally, I have to point out that I've never disliked Sasha Dewan as the master, and he was also featured in this episode. 
I actually think he's a solid actor that has genuinely tried very hard to make his appearances interesting beyond the poorly written material. As far as the plot goes, there's really not much to discuss about the power of the Doctor, as it was pretty much the usual Chibnall silliness. A bunch of things happening at once, very little logic, and dialogues that feel like they should be on a completely different show. I suppose that given his limitations as a sci-fi writer, he tried his best to make it a bit less stinky than usual, without much success. Anyhow, the Master tries to regenerate into the Doctor, and only a collection of former cast members and friends can help reverse this. You also have a volcano and some Daleks, and also Cybermen or Cybermasters or whatever they're supposed to be now. Even after the Doctor is saved, the Master still wants the Doctor to die, so he pulls one final maneuver to make sure that happens. Right before regenerating, Jody says goodbye to Yaz, who cries a lot. Then a bunch of Doctor companions open a new Companions Anonymous group where they talk about their feelings. And then Jodie Whittaker regenerates into David Tennant, and that's the end of the episode. Now I know I should have been happy to see David Tennant again, who for some reason regenerated with his own clothes, but in all honesty, I just felt rather apathetic. Bringing Tennant back may be the ultimate sign that the BBC know just how badly they fucked up, but I can't help but feel that this is just a bait-and-switch type of maneuver. On the surface, having Tennant and Russell T. Davies back would seem like this is a good thing, but I suspect this may not be the big win disappointed fans are hoping for. For starters, David Tennant's return is temporary. He will appear in only one, two, maybe three episodes, and then regenerate into Nishuti Gatwa, and that will be the real test. In my opinion, only if Gatwa plays the Doctor as a character, without making the whole portrayal about his own real life and personal preferences, and Russell T. Davies doesn't bring his own personal politics into his writing this time around, does this new era have a chance of succeeding. However, judging by some of the interviews I've seen with Gatwa and Davies recently, and Davies' overall public behavior in recent times, I would say that I've set my expectations to low. I will certainly be giving them a chance, and I'll also give them some type of grace period, but they really have to deliver something great for me to regularly watch this show again. Another big concern moving forward is that starting in 2023, the international distributor for all the new episodes of Doctor Who will be exclusively Disney+. Plus. Now, some people may think Disney Plus is a very nice streamer, but most people know that it is actually a place where beloved franchises go to die. Now, in Doctor Who's case, this would be a difficult feat because it's already all but dead, but this just may be the final nail in its coffin. And for those of you who are thinking, well, Disney Plus will show it, but that doesn't mean they have anything to do with the content, I strongly disagree. A company like Disney doesn't get involved in a show like Doctor Who, even as its distributor, without making some demands. And we all know what that means, don't we? What did you think about the power of the Doctor and David Tennant's return? Feel free to let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on that wonderful <laughs> notification bell. Thanks for watching, my friends. Thank you, and good day! I am such an awesome guy. I make so many videos. Brum.